Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making a super easy three ingredient chocolate peanut butter pinwheel fudge. Now this is just the perfect addition to all of your holiday goodie trays. It's great for um, gift giving, for uh, dessert exchanges and things like that around Christmas, office parties, church dinners, any kind of potluck. And this is a really good one to put, make and put in your fridge and keep there so that you have it for those unexpected guests that drop by. Now what you need is a can, 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. And we're gonna divide that in half. Now you can use your digital kitchen scale to do it. You can use a measuring cup and kind of do it. But if you don't have a digital kitchen scale, I recommend getting two identical glasses, sitting them side by side and filling, you know, emptying your condensed milk out in them until you have equal amounts in each glass. And that's probably the easiest way to do it without a kitchen scale. But get as much of that out of the can as you can because you're gonna need all of it. And we've talked about sweetened condensed milk before. It's a great time saver with desserts because it's already cooked. Now, the other thing you need is a cup and a half of chocolate chips, and I'm using semi-sweet, and a cup and a half of peanut butter chips. And you can do this with other flavors too. You can do it with butterscotch and um, white chocolate chips, any, any kind of chips you can use in this. And we're just gonna melt the chips into the condensed milk in the microwave. And I'm gonna do my chocolate layer first. I'm adding my chocolate chips to half of my condensed milk, and I'm gonna microwave it for just 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna stir it, and if it's not melted, I'll microwave it a little bit more. But you want to be careful. You don't want to overheat this. If you overheat it, it won't turn out. And that's about the only way to mess it up is to overheat it. So be very, very careful when you're heating it. Start with 30 seconds in the microwave. Now I'm just going to stir this. And hopefully I won't have to put it back in at all. But if I do, I'm only going to put it back in for 10 to 15 seconds. And the more you heat this, the longer the next steps in the process are going to take. So you just want to heat it until you melt the chips. Don't, and if you overdo it, like I said, it will mess up the chocolate and it'll be lumpy and it just won't come out right. It won't set right and it won't taste right. Now you don't want to start your next layer until you get the first layer done because we're going to put this first layer in the refrigerator while we're mixing up the second layer, which will let it set up a little bit and it will keep the layer separated. If you don't give it just a, you know, five minutes or so in the fridge between layers, then your two layers will mix together and you won't have a pinwheel. I've heated mine for a total of 40 seconds. You just want to stir it until it's completely creamy. It'll also get really shiny, kind of start to look like fudge because that's what we're making here is fudge. All right, that gave us that shiny look. That's what we want. And it's creamy and mixed up. Now, you're going to need a 10 by 15 pan to put this on, and I recommend a couple pieces of wax paper. You're gonna have to have something to spread it out on. You can use wax paper, you can use saran wrap, or you can use parchment paper. I think wax paper works better. And we're gonna put our first layer, which I'm doing chocolate, and you can do either layer first, or if you're doing other flavors, you know, you can choose how to do the layers. Just scrape it all out of your bowl there and spread it out. Uh, you can use your spatula and your hands to completely do this process, but I have a kind of a little flat glass here. There it is. <laughs> and once I get it sort of spread out, I think that glass works really well to even it out. You can also, I've seen the little um, dough rollers, the small ones, I don't happen to have one of those, but if you happen to have one of those, that would certainly work well for this. 
and you do kind of need the 10 by 15 pan so that you get it the right size if you don't have a 10 by 15 pan you could just cut you a 10 by 15 piece of wax paper or parchment paper and use that as your guide but that's about the right thickness to roll this up now like i said you can use your hands to completely spread this out in your spatula but this little glass trick here i really like it and it evens it out better than your fingers just put another piece of wax paper over the top of it and then use your glass or if you've got like i said one of those little rolling pins that works good too and kind of roll it out if you don't get it thin enough it will be very very hard to roll up and if you leave it in the refrigerator for too long it's going to be very very hard to roll up so what we're going to do is we're just going to leave it in there for a little while and check it and if we can get it to roll and come off of our paper then it's ready if it won't come off of our paper then you put it back in the fridge for a little bit longer now i'm going to put this one in the refrigerator and then i'm going to do the same thing with the peanut butter chips that we just did with the chocolate chips all right now add your peanut butter chips to your other half of your sweetened condensed milk and then microwave it for 30 seconds All right, and now we're just going to stir this until it's creamy. I'm sorry about my froggy voice. I got sick before Thanksgiving, and when I get sick, it always gets in my throat. And I'm hoping this don't last till spring, because it has before. <laughs> it seems like if I get a cold, I end up with laryngitis. I'm feeling pretty good, but I've got the froggy voice okay now that's pretty creamy and again it's starting to get that shiny color like fudge gets so we're going to get our chocolate out and we're going to put this on top of the chocolate now this has really probably only been in the fridge about three minutes but it's so thin and we didn't heat it up hot i mean a total of 40 seconds in the microwave is all that each um flavor was in there so um it doesn't take it long to set up. Now, when you put your peanut butter on or your second layer, whichever layer you choose for your second layer, kind of spread it out in some lumps or some dollops or whatever. That makes it easier to spread without tearing up your bottom layer. And you can add other stuff to this. Between the layers, you can put some um, sprinkles or some crushed up peppermint candy pieces or something. I don't know that I'd want peppermint candy in with the chocolate peanut butter but if you were doing uh chocolate just dark chocolate and white chocolate you could maybe do some peppermint in there and have like a a mint chocolate thing you could roll the whole log in um, sprinkles or you could put sprinkles in the middle you can add in flavors you know different uh, candy oil flavors a little vanilla in this would be good you could do the caramel chips and add in some sea salt. Do chocolate and caramel. That would be delicious. But we're going to very carefully kind of spread this out. And my chocolate really could have used another minute or two in the fridge because I can see it kind of spreading out a little bit as I add this. So you do want to be careful or like I said, you won't end up with a pinwheel. You'll just end up with a log. I am going to link our Christmas candy um, playlist in the description of this video because we have up all kinds of fudge and um, divinity, uh, Martha Washington candy, uh, peanut brittle, just all kinds of candy. If you can make it for Christmas, we've probably got a video up. And these easy fudges are, um, you know, they're kind of a new thing that folks are doing. And they're certainly a new thing for me. I mean, I always stood at the stove and stirred it forever before. <laughs> but I do kind of like some of these easy fudges, and they are very good. They were surprisingly good. I did not expect them to be as good as fudge that you stand there and cook and stir. But they are. And the peanut butter and chocolate fudge mixed together, well, you know, 
it just don't get no better than that. All right, I am going to use my hands because I'm trying not to mix this these two layers together. And if I don't spread this out a little bit more, that's what I'm going to do. So, you know, so this second layer is a little bit tricky. And you definitely don't want to get it mixed in your chocolate layer or you won't have a pinwheel. Before my peanut butter gets as stiff as the chocolate is, I'm going to take my other piece of part or wax paper and I'm going to roll it out a little bit and try to spread it out with my cup and fill in some of the gaps. Now, when you're doing this second layer, which the last time I did this, I did not have any trouble because I let my first layer sit in the fridge probably five full minutes. And I would recommend letting that first layer sit in the fridge five full minutes because what that will do is that will set it up and make it much easier to spread this second layer over top of it without mixing it in. So let it, that first layer sit for five minutes in the fridge before you put the second layer on it. And that'll make sure you have a nice even pinwheel. Like I'm gonna have to leave some gaps in this. If I don't, I'm not gonna have a pinwheel at all. It's just gonna mix together. But that's okay. It'll still come out and it'll still be pretty. Just give your first layer five minutes in the fridge. Now we're gonna have to put this in the fridge, like I said, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer before we can roll it up into a log. While we're waiting on our fudge pinwheel roll there to set up enough so that we can roll it, I want to take just a minute and encourage you to remember what the entire Christmas season is about. And John 3.16 kind of sums it up. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe it in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The whole reason that we celebrate at Christmas, the reason for making all the fudge and all that stuff and buying all the gifts is to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And all that stuff doesn't even have to be done in order to celebrate Christmas. So if you're stressed and you're just overwhelmed, maybe you can't afford to do all that this year, or maybe you don't don't have the energy or you don't feel well enough to do it all, don't worry about it. I know grandma's fudge was the best fudge ever and that standing there stirring it for 20 minutes or whatever it takes while it's cooking, you know, that's the good stuff. That's the best stuff. But these easy recipes take a lot of that load off and you can make some easy recipes and still have tasty treats for when people stop by and not do all the work. And even if you don't have the tasty treats when people stop by, celebrate the love and celebrate the real reason for Christmas, which is the gift of our Savior. <clears throat> if you can't buy gifts, don't worry about it because that's not what it's about. It's about the gift of our Savior. And stay focused on that. If all you have to give this Christmas is to share the story of Christmas, then share the story of Christmas and don't worry about the rest of it. Maybe do something for other people instead of giving them gifts. Because I know times are tough and I know prices are getting higher. So don't worry about the extra stuff. Take a breath. Look for other ways to celebrate, but keep Christ in the center of it. And don't let the rest of it stress you out because the rest of it isn't important. It's about God's gift of His Son as atonement for our sins and so that we could have eternal life, so that we could be saved, so that we could spend eternity in our Father's house with His Son, Jesus Christ. So just remember that Christmas starts with Christ and keep it simple this year if you need to. And don't worry about it. 
because that's all that really matters. Okay, it's only been about 10 minutes, but I think this is probably about stiff enough that we can roll it up. We'll see. I recommend wax paper for this because it's easy to peel off and it's easy to start the roll. And if you watched our um, pumpkin roll video, we rolled it up like this and we started our roll and then peeled it back as we were rolling it. And you can start your roll and have a nice tight center with the wax paper and then peel it off. Getting the center of this pinwheel tight is probably the hardest part of this recipe. And you do want to take the time to get the center rolled up kind of tight because that's important for the whole thing to look correct. So just wrestle it there for a minute until you get it started. And once you get it started, it goes a little bit easier. And this one here is being particularly cantankerous. You want to try to roll it up straight. And you do go long ways on your pan. Do it the 15 inch wide way and roll so you're going to end up with a 15 inch long log of fudge. And see, this is just being downright aggravating. Just keep playing with it though and working with it until you get it to roll. Normally the wax paper releases much easier than this is doing. Maybe another minute or two in the refrigerator would have made it release easier. If you need to use a spatula though to kind of help it off the paper, you can do that too. Just whatever you got to do. And you can see there, the reason why I stopped spreading my peanut butter layer out is because it was mashing the chocolate out. And I've got spots where my chocolate layer is like super thin. I mean, it's literally falling apart because it's so thin. So that's why you should leave your first layer in the refrigerator for at least five minutes before you add your second layer. <laughs> Otherwise, you end up with that little problem. Once you get it rolled about halfway, it goes much quicker. And I'm going to go ahead and take mine off this pan. You can see I'm kind of rolling it over the paper and then peeling the paper off. And that keeps it together and it keeps it tight. Now the paper should peel off like this right here. And you shouldn't have a ton of your fudge left on the paper. It should just peel right off there. And I say give it 20-30 minutes in the fridge before you try rolling it up. And that'll make it a whole lot easier than the time I just had there. And then once you get it rolled up, you're going to wrap it back up in some parchment paper, wax paper, saran wrap, whatever you got. And you're going to put it back in the fridge for an hour or two or until you're ready to serve it. But you want to let it get good and firm in the fridge before you slice it. Otherwise, it's not going to slice. And when you try to slice it, what's going to happen is that your peanut butter and your chocolate layers are going to mix together. So that time between layers and between rolling and between rolling and slicing in the fridge is very, very important. Five minutes between layers in the fridge and then about 25, 30 minutes in the fridge before you roll it. If you're in a hurry, you can put it in the freezer five minutes at a time before you roll it and that'll speed it up. And you can even put it in the freezer for a minute or two between layers and that'll speed it up. But I'm gonna put this back in the fridge for about an hour before I slice it. And in an hour, it should be set up and pretty hard. And you can hear that makes a nice thud there on the counter. And you do wanna use a very sharp nice knife to slice it with. Now, if you're making this and you're going to not be serving it immediately, if it's something that you want to keep in the fridge for when folks stop by, leave it in the log and slice it when you're going to serve it. And you could even make it now and it would still be good at Christmas if you wrapped it up real tight in saran wrap, maybe put it in a freezer bag in the log. That will keep it from drying out. And then when you get ready to serve it, you just slice it and you can see there we have a nice chocolate peanut butter swirl and that's what you're looking for you want to slice it about a quarter of an inch thick 
And this would be really pretty, like I said, on any of your dessert trays. It would be good for a dessert exchange, you know, where people do cookie exchanges and stuff around the holidays. You could do this. Um, we have up other easy fudge recipes. And if you're looking for an old-fashioned candy that's really easy, try the, peanut, uh, the potato candy. Um, it's a peanut butter pinwheel, and you make it with potatoes. Don't taste like potatoes. But all you do, it, I mean, if you can boil a potato, you can make it. And it's probably, in all honesty, easier than this to make. This is a really good one for the kids. And it's pretty. I mean, look at how pretty that is. And you can do different flavors. Like I said, the caramel and chocolate. Put a little sea salt in it. Add some peppermint to it. Um, just different stuff. Butterscotch. Anything that you can get chips for, you can do this. So hang on to this one. It's an easy one. It'll take some of that stress out of baking because it's no bake, no cook. Kids can do it. It's a good teacher gift. I used to send fudge to all my kids' teachers the whole time they were in school. You do want to cut the end off. It's not particularly gorgeous. But try this. It's delicious. And the easy fudges are as, well, they're this close to being as good as the ones that you stand and cook all day because that sweetened condensed milk is already cooked. So let them do the work for you. I want to thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, I want to ask you to please click like and subscribe and share our videos with your friends. Until next time, remember to put God first.